Hi everyone, my name is Anna. I'm the CEO of Liquid Gold Concept and today I'm going to be talking to you about our new breast health training tool which we launched this week at the 2018 ILCA conference, International Lactation Consultant Association conference in Portland, Oregon. Um, in the last two videos I spoke about um, a variety of different breast health conditions. We talked about herpes zoster, we talked about contact dermatitis, about various malignant presentations from lobular carcinoma, inflammatory breast cancer, melanoma, cutaneous manifestations of the underlying disease. Um, and then in the second video, we talked about how important it is to see pathologies, um, the same or similar pathologies presented on different skin tones because they can uh, be, be tricky to diagnose or to identify, how important it is to find, um, identify surgical scars, so I'll point that out again here. Um, we have biopsy scars here. Um, and thinking about the differential diagnosis for you know, itchy, flaky skin. Is that a yeast infection, Paget's disease, contact dermatitis, bacterial infection? Um, and you know, so with the bacterial, it's a little bit more purulent versus Paget's and yeast infections are going to be a little bit more flaky and dry. Uh, now we're going to move on to a couple other clinical scenarios. So I have um, this, these two that are really interesting. Um, I don't know how, how many of you can guess off the top of your head what this represents, but again, different skin tones, same condition. You notice that there's periareolar bruising here and here, um, and then at the base of the nipple, there's quite a bit of red discoloration. Um, this is likely a um, damage because the breast pump flange was too tight. So I'm actually going to ask my colleagues next door um, to help to borrow a breast pump flange, so I'll show you exactly what I mean. So give me a second. I'll be right back. All right, I am back with some flanges. So this is the attachment to typical pumps. You can see that I have the flange itself, which is this cone-shaped structure. It's that's what's going to going to go um, here on the breast tissue itself, and then the nipple is going to be pulled in uh, when there's um, suction coming in from the tube, and then the breast milk will come down into the bottle. So what happens when this is too small is that the nipple rubs against the plastic part, and then you get this crazy, basically friction injury uh, from the pump flange being too small. And here you can see it says 25 millimeters. Um, flange sizes can vary. I've seen as small as 19 millimeters all the way up to 36. So it's really important um, to tell your patients to size their nipples and to actually turn on the machine and see, and see what, make sure the nipple is centered in the flange. I'll show you what I mean by that. So if the nipple is off center, it's gonna be pulled in and the areolar tissue, the tissue around the nipple is gonna be scraped against the, the center. Uh, so instead you wanna have the nipple centered throughout the, the pumping session so that it's being pulled in symmetrically into the the flange. Um, and then, of course, as uh, breast tissue swells from engorgement in the first week postpartum, um, and then uh, the engorgement decreases, there might be changes in the flange size that are appropriate. So it's important to have, have that in mind and have kind of a size up and a size down to account for changes in breast tissue um, during the breastfeeding experience. So here I mentioned we have these two different skin tones that are representing the same pathology, a um, damage to the nipple because of a pump flange that was too small. So the next uh, breast that I wanted to show you is also usually lactation related. So here we have um, a blood blister. You can see that right there. A blood blister on the nipple um, and can be painful. Many of you have probably slammed your finger in a door or something and um, had a blood blister on your finger. So you kind of know what that uh, experience is like. This can also be caused by friction rubbing on the pump flange that I just showed you. Um, one thing that's important to consider is to make sure this is actually a blood blister, not just blood oozing from a particular from one nipple pore, because that could be a sign of an underlying malignancy, or it could also be um, a sign of an introductal papilloma, which is a benign condition, but just is a twisting of um, breast tissue around a blood vessel causing it to break and leak blood. Um, so thinking about different um, different reasons why there could be blood coming out of a nipple or a blister forming is just 
part of the critical thinking that we want all of our health providers to have. Then you probably notice that there is this lesion, this bump on the breast as well. So I'm gonna do a close up of this. Notice that it has quite a bit of texture to it. So it could be a mole, could also be um, like an accessory nipple. So we humans, um, as while we're developing in utero as, as a fetus, we have uh, a milk line that forms. So we can, we form basically uh, nipples and mammary tissue all the way starting from our armpit down to our groin. And uh, sometimes not all of these um, nipples or mammary, mammary glands will regress. Um, usually most people have just the two bilateral breasts. Um, but in many of us, some of that tissue is retained. And then you can have an accessory nipple. You can even have accessory breast tissues, which is which our lactation simulators have. Um, and during um, the menstrual cycle, pregnancy, lactation, because of the changes in hormones, um, these accessory tissues can swell up. Sometimes they can leak uh, breast milk. Um, sometimes they can become infected. So it's really important to think about that and not assume that everything is cancer and ask a pretty comprehensive history of the patient about uh, swelling, changes in color, any kind of discharge to make sure that you're really um, thinking about you know, congenital conditions and not just pathologies every time. All right, well stay tuned for the next and final segment where I go through the last few nipples that I have here. Thank you.